Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Football Gentleman, the only English language podcast dedicated to Armenian football. My tongue is twisting, and I am joined by my co-hosts, Trotens and Armen, on this beautiful Sunday morning for me, evening for them. Uh, how are you gentlemen doing? Good, good. I, I'm not even going to ask why your tongue, is, your tongue is twisting. I don't want to know. <laughs> I got out of bed what? like 20 Amazing. minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. We have a lot to cover, as usual, and we will start domestically in the Armenian Premier League. (laughs) Start with a quick look at the table, although it's very early on in the season after six match days being played. The top three in the league, Alashkert, Urardu, and Arara Armenia, uh, with 16 points, 12 points, and 10 points, respectively. And at the bottom of the table, uh, we have FC Noah on two points. Uh, ninth is Bekma with three points, and then Shirak in eighth with four points. Uh, still very early days, but there is still a lot to discuss in Armenia. Uh, Armen, big story so far this season domestically is with a guy who we had anticipated making a move that did not end up coming to fruition, Jiraj Shahoyan. How has he been performing? He is on fire, and I mean on fire, literally, uh, well, not literally, but you get the point. I mean, uh, uh, he's like scoring nonstop. He's got, I believe he's got five goals and two assists in, what is it, six games already? And, of course, he's uh, one of the two goal scorers of the league. He got player of the month uh, on the very first month for the league, for the APL, at the second to bottom team in the table. Uh, I mean, he's just too good, man. It, it, there's no way around it. And uh, there were rumors last season that he's got uh, complacent, that he's gotten lazy, uh, that, you know, success early on in his career with the senior national team debut and being Caparlos' protege kind of had gotten to his head and whatnot. But after leaving FCAA uh, uh, Armenia and back to Bukama and starting again, you could tell that he's putting on, uh, he's putting in the the work. And well, he was for the second time already linked with a move to Porto, the Portuguese giants. To, uh, but it didn't come to fruition just yet. But uh, I would say that's a good thing. And, and I mean, not per se, but uh, silver lining, we will get to see one season of his uh, at Bukama with uh, Artur Seropian, another insane new talent of the APO. Uh, it's been so new that, I mean, Stjopa Makachan and Artur Seropian's uh, takeoff has been so uh, fast and so sudden that we weren't even able to put them inside a Future Stars episode because we kind of release one every semester. And these two guys, Stiopa and Seropian, came out of the blue, uh, took the U19 to a lit round, not senior national team debut, and now Seropian is set to move to Dynamo Moscow uh, to replace, of course, Arsene Zaharian when he moves to Chelsea, uh, which <laughs> we will discuss long and in, in, in the lat. Uh, but it's supposed to be the replacement for Zakharian, a Russian citizen of uh, an Armenian Russian citizen. Well, an actual Armenian citizen will replace him. Uh, we will get to see Seropian and Shaoyan for a whole season together. Finally, I was only able to see them together a few games, and it was a little, it was too little for my taste. I want to see them together for a whole season, and we'll get that. Luckily. Yeah, to put to put things into context, Bekma has scored eight goals so far this season, seven of which Shaoyan has either scored himself or assisted. In terms imagine, of total, yeah, bro, imagine that all of this happened with Seropian in Moscow. Imagine when it comes back. Yeah, I mean, we'll uh, we'll we'll see. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I I expect Bekma to do a little better. Start to get yeah. Hopefully they start to get the actual wins. 
Yeah, I think they, they've been – it's realistically offense isn't the issue for them. It's defense. They, being, they're on the back foot yep. most games, and they, they, love, they still manage to them. score. Yeah, so it's, it's a tough they one. They actually roll. Dutma is so interesting because they have the players uh, like Yachani Kulbasarian uh, on bench. Mm-hmm. Another uh, another football uh, football Kentron future star candidate. Uh, they repatriated them. Uh, the guy from from Germany. He was uh, Germany D Mannschaft U nine U seventeen. Uh, now he plays for Armenia under twenty one uh, national team. Of course, he captained Hamburg uh, youth uh, teams. He has an insane talent, and re- they repatriated him to bench him. Another yeah. one of those Again. moves you don't understand, and they sold. Uh, well, no, they had to return Skiobama Kachan to Ararat Armenia. So that's another center back position uh, voided. Uh, they sold Haiki Shanyan to Ararat Yerevan. Uh, therefore, their two starting center backs are gone, and the one quality center back they bought, they're benching him. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, I, I I haven't made it a secret that I don't think their manager is good. I think he sucks, and I think the FFA needs to fire him and replace him with someone that actually knows what they're doing. Anyway, moving on to FC Noah, who have signed Robert Arzumanian, the former Urarzu uh, manager and Armenian national team central defender, uh, to a contract to try to lift Noah out of this incredible slump. Of course, the team has had a dramatic overhaul um getting rid of a majority of their foreign players only keeping like three and now there are just a bunch of young armenians on this team um so far he has taken one game in charge and he lost three nil uh to a very good punic side but we do anticipate noah bouncing back because we know arzumanian is a good manager we know that he's gonna be playing a lot of armenians and what was that? They actually drew this weekend against Ararat. You know, there you go. Oh, was it a no no? Was it a no no? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. I knew I'd forgotten something. I was like, that was too many days ago. That doesn't. I got you, make sense. I got you. Well, yeah. I mean, technically, he didn't uh, train with the team yet, right? Uh, it was only few days when he had just arrived, and uh, they played Punic, I believe. He, I think or, he only had like one training session. So, I mean, That's what do you lucky. expect? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's he, not enough, obviously. It's yeah. not enough. Um, but it's perfect environment for him. All the young Armenians there, hopefully he'll, he'll, uh, he'll start lifting them up, like you said. Yeah, I mean, we so, know he comes from a good foundation of Urardu, where they were, at least. I can't, I can't say they are currently uh, good at, at bringing up the young Armenian players giving them first team minutes. So uh, I think it's going to be a wait and see game with with Noah and just see what happens during the season. Yo, challenge mentioned Punic. We got to go there. Yeah, we do. Uh, We're going to be talking about Punic a lot this episode for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. But first, we will start with former Armenian national team winger, famously scored against Manchester United in the Europa League, Aras Ozbilis is officially back from injury and with the Punic squad. Um, it's a good boost, good bonus. I don't know how much he can particularly contribute given his age, uh, how injury prone he is. And, you know, I, I think he's going to contribute in, in other ways off the pitch, some forms of leadership. He's, I believe, the only person who has ever seen European competition in this squad, um, in this Punic squad. So I think it's going to be, uh, well, I guess besides Alexander Karapetian, but Ozbilis has played at the highest level. You know, he's played senior national team games, plenty of them. He's played in the Europa League for Ajax. He's um, played top five leagues. Bro. Yeah, he's played top five, five leagues. leagues? He, I, I would say that five minutes of him on the pitch, that would suffice. That would be enough for him to make a difference. Yeah, I, I don't see him um I don't see him starting. That's for sure. Oh, definitely not. No, not at his age, but 
I do think, you know, if, if he can, if you give him 15 minutes off the bench, he he'll, he can he's going to score. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to score. He's going to do something or yeah. assist. I don't know. But, yeah, he, he's way too good. Five yeah. minutes would, would be enough against any opposition, really. So, yeah. it's, just, it's all about how Melikian's going to use him. Well, and speaking of Melikian, apparently he is losing control of the locker room right oh. before conference league. Uh, he was involved in a fight, apparently, with some of the best team players, Ossi, Davidian, Najaran, and Zambrano, what was reported. Uh, and apparently, the f- first three are actually looking to leave uh, Punic. And this comes after we find out Punic had signed something like eight players, including Alexander Karapetian, Army national team hitman, recalling football game show feature stars Gunnik Petrosian. I like that decision except for the fact that he's probably not going to play a minute of Europe. Uh, and uh, Macedonian national team legendary defensive midfielder Stefan Skorovsky, which I actually really like that signing. Now, guys, you have Europe in a few days' time. You have a, you have a very, what, Ukraine under-21 center back Aussie. You have David Davidian, who has been was the star of your team prior to getting injured. You have Najarian, who, let's be, let's face it, is borderline abuse at this point. This this guy not playing. And then we have Zambrano, who, when he's been on the pitch, has been one of Punic's best players. Why is Melikian having such a difficult time managing these players? I don't know. I mean, the, as you said, the signings are good. The signings... At least the ones we mentioned, because as you said, they signed like eight players, and we only mentioned three, or maybe you could mention another one. I don't know. Uh, there was this other guy who came from the Ukrainian Premier League, is good as well. But uh, there are like four of the eight signings that are bad. That I mean, they are APL below average of the APL. And that's what happens all the time in the Armenian Premier League. They get like they get one good player, they get and with that good player, they get another one that isn't good at all, that is like amateur, uh, and that doesn't make sense. So I could understand why all of those four uh, Unique stars would want out or uh, would want to have a say. You know, uh, pretty much the same thing happened with the Artur Avagimian that is now back playing the Ukrainian Premier League with uh, Alexandria or Alexandria. I don't know how to pronounce that team, but they're one of the best teams in the Ukrainian Premier League and the guy's starting for them. Uh, and Atalashkert, he was being benched. He had a whole fallout with the the team. Well, then the same is happening all over again now, but it seems like it's not just one player in this case. It seems like it's getting blown way out of proportion. and. And rightfully so. I mean, it's about time, man. I mean, those things cannot happen in professional football. And actually, I don't know Melikian's mind. I don't know Melikian's position here. But uh, Melikian talks about how the Armenian Premier League needs to be professional. Well, this is it. We agree. Make the professional, uh, do the the professional thing, bro. I don't know, I, man. And it's a little I, too much. I think losing any of these players, it would be a huge blow. I mean, central defensively speaking, the team is injury prone. Davidian is, along with Harutunian, our joint best players on this team. And not playing Najarian is a crime. And Bro, clearly, that, yeah. he's not. He's just not going to play him. We, I mean, that's just what we're seeing. He's just not going to play the guy. It's so, insane. I mean, each game I've seen of Najarian on the pitch uh, that last uh, last semester, bro, he was way too good. He played uh, defensive mid. He played central mid. He played uh, off the wings. He played uh, fullback. He even played center back against Cluj. That was, and and every time he's on the pitch, he makes a difference. Yeah, that guy so, doesn't deserve that treatment. We'll get we'll get into this a little bit further as we discuss their Europa Conference League journey later in the show. But first, Chadens, we're moving on to your neck of the woods in our Armenian Players Abroad segment. And in Cyprus, uh, a transfer that we feel like we had a hand in, 
Arthur Kartashian, how is he doing so far in your neck of the woods? The he had a, he had several friendly games. Uh, I believe, unfortunately, he didn't win any of them. Uh, last Saturday, he played in the Clash of the Armenians of Cyprus, uh, as we like to call it. Uh, in the game between Olympiagos Nicosia versus uh, Anorthosis, uh, a few days beforehand, it was reported that Haroyan was recovering from an injury. He was set to miss the next two games as well. Uh, therefore, he did not play. But on Kardashian's end, uh, he th- that game ended 2-1 for uh, Hampar Tumian's side, Anorthosis. Uh, Hampar Tumian played effectively the second half. Uh, as you know, with his passing, with his crossing, he was more uh, attacking. Uh, in his area in the right wing position as well. Uh, however, Kardashian performed well as well. Uh, he, he needs time. For him, he needs time. Uh, you can see it, how he, he acts on the ball, how he's looking around, what kind of passes he makes. Uh, this kind of These kind of actions uh, determine that. Uh, Ohovo obviously is there for years, so he's, he's used to it and he was confident, uh, of course. However, Kardashian played yesterday as of this recording. No, sorry, Friday, so two days ago. And they they lost uh, 5-0 against uh, uh, Aris Limassol uh, away from home. A very uh, tough loss. I was not able to watch that game, so I'm, I'm not sure how he performed. But it, again, it's a bad score. Anortho C will play in 25, uh, 25 minutes as we're recording, so uh, against Aboel Nicosia, a very big game. So we'll see how that goes. Sticking to this, uh, Charance, with you a little bit, Olympiakos Nicosia, do we expect them to improve this season? Because they, they got, got promoted not too long ago, right? So they're, where do we expect to see them and on the table? Do we expect to see a better side, or are we going to see Karthashian be- just fighting for relegation? Let's be fair, though. Well, they I mean, wouldn't they, fight for relegation. They started the season uh, against two heavyweights. Yeah. Okay. So, so we hope they bounce back. Um, and speaking about well, yeah, that, they're not gonna go for Europe though. But uh, oh, yeah, they they they're gonna try to stick for the the top half of the playoffs if they manage. They signed several players, but obviously signing isn't always what fixes the problem. Very true. Very true. Moving on to another part of Europe, a lot farther north than Cyprus, in Denmark, Armen. Uh, we love ourselves this part of the world. What's going on over there? Yes, at least uh, finally good news. Uh, Denmark lately has been the complete opposite of what's been happening in Cyprus. It's only good news in Denmark, baby. It's only good news in the Baltics, uh, in the... Um, Yes, in the Baltic Sea, at least. Uh, we have Andre Chalisher, Armenian national team center back. I would say he's per- perhaps the one in best form, the center back in best form, maybe alongside Stjopa Makutcha. So that would be an interesting uh, pair to start. Uh, Andre Chalisher just returned from an injury and tops the table with Silkeborg as well as uh, Edgar Babayan, Armenian national team striker, Edgar Babayan and his team Randers. Uh, Speaking of, Edgar just scored a few minutes before we started recording his first goal upon his return uh, home to Randers. Uh, He's got so far this season, uh, of course, we're only starting the season, one goal and one assist in only 100 league minutes mostly off the bench. So that's literally one uh, goal contribution, one direct, one direct goal, goal contribution every 50 minutes. Imagine that, bro. That is form. Very, right, very solid is... from him. I think he's a, uh, he's a player that we're, 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 we were hoping would have had a really good impact off the bench, and he did, to be fair to him. Uh, I think other parts of the team Definitely. let him down dramatically when it comes to the national team. So I, I hope 
to see a fit Chalisir because we haven't seen a fit Chalisir for Armin in a while. And uh, I expect both of them to be in the squad list later this month. Definitely. Yeah, um, and both of them start at least once of one of the two games. Oh, for sure. I I I, I fully expect um I fully expect them to be to be starting in those games. And I was actually looking for the highlights as we were talking. And Babayan, I believe he rounds the goalkeeper, or the goalkeeper was up for a corner from the looks of it, uh, to try to equalize in the last minute of the game. And he just ran run the full length of the pitch and tapped it into an empty net. So showing his he, showing bro, his pace. He doesn't let you down. He doesn't let you down. He's one of those players that can perform at the highest levels and that doesn't get cold feet. He's got the personality. He's got the build. Uh, his decision making off the pitch is a little uh, uh, dumb, but on the pitch he's class. I mean, the, it's no wonder that uh, Bundesliga and Serie A clubs wanted him two seasons ago before he started making those dumb off the pitch decisions. But what are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly. What can you do? Moving on to one of our favorite parts of the world. <laughs> I'm kidding. Russia, where we will be discussing our golden boy, Eduard Spertian, who took Krasnodar to the top of the table in the Russian Premier League uh, with seven goals, joint top goal scorer in the league, and two assists in 700 minutes, which equals to one goal contribution every 78 minutes. Now, boys... We have tried or are continuing to try our best in bigging up Eduard Spertian. But sometimes it feels like sometimes it feels like the words in our tweets aren't enough. Because no matter Bro. what, every week this kid pulls something out of the bag. And there's a reason for that. That's what he wants. I mean Remember when he liked all of those comments and tweets and stuff saying that he was staying in Krasnodar amid all of the rumors going to France or and Germany? Well, that should have been a hint. He, he wanted to stay for at least one season to help the team, and he's doing that. And, and boy, is he helping. Yeah, I think I, I, we were, of course, some of those people that were uh, that were critical of his decision to stay. But, you know, this goes to show that there is obviously, you know, a lot of things that we don't know as, on the outside. And especially considering this is Russia, a place where we don't get news from ever, really, because, you know, language barrier and uh, shadow banning and things of that nature, considering current geopolitical situations. But he... Clearly, one, is being followed by clubs. Uh, it's very obvious. And two, made the right decision. I think even if he carries this form throughout the first half of the season, he's already almost at double-digit goal contributions after seven games. So he needs one more goal or assist. That's insane. And I think everyone sees it. Because of the recent Arsene Zaharian to Chelsea thing and and that breaking down, I think a lot of people are starting to like look at the RPL. And if you're shallow to just look at stats, you'll see that he's going to be number one. But if you actually look at games and how the play style is, he's still number one. Um, hopefully, <laughs> I and I, I think the whole logic behind this move for him to stay at Krasnodar for one more year was so he can do this. Was that he could be the focal point of the team. He could score. Never. He can assist. <clears throat> I said that. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, John did say that. And then at the end of the day, I think he, I think, I think he wants a top twenty team in Europe, not not league, like club. He deserves it. Uh, wholeheartedly, of course, he deserves it. He's been he's been amazing. Anything else to add, Chadens? Oh, no, you you covered it up. It, that that's exactly the situation and and he he's some even are saying are realizing that he's uh he could be the potential like potentially mkhitaryan's level people are actually realizing oh, yeah. that bro yeah there, uh, there was a threat on Reddit, one year actually. younger than one year younger than mkhitaryan when he made his wefa champions league group stage debut that should be enough that's true and 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 
you can't take away what Edward is doing. And someone pointed out that he was the that at his time in Shakhtar and at Metal or Donetsk, Mkhitaryan was the best player in Eastern Europe, which like mm-hmm. that's well, no argument. Hands down, the guy was the best player in Eastern Europe. And that's why he he earned that move to Borussia Dortmund. Um, I think, of course, I think the the league in itself in Russia is is a better is at a much mm-hmm. higher level than the Ukrainian Premier League for sure. But the club that you know he was at Shakhtar Donetsk was, I mean, it was a Brazil national team B team. You know, oh, it yeah. was pretty much yeah, back then, 10, yeah. ten Brazilians and Mkhitaryan and maybe maybe one Ukrainian. Um, no, I, re- I remember, bro. Yeah. I, I remember that lineup almost by heart. It was something like P- Ukrainians, Piatov at goal, uh, Razvan Rat, I believe, uh, Razvan Romanian Rat, yeah. fullback. Uh, the other one was Dario Serna, Croatia captain. Uh, oh, uh, the he was Rakit. there with him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He played with him. Wow. Lot of good players. And Rakit and, and Rat, actually, Rat after Shakhtar. And Heno, <laughs> Rat earned a move to West Ham. Uh, then uh, Rakitsky, Kusher, uh, I don't know, Stepanenko. It was a class team. Oh, oh, and what was the name of that? Uh, Czech Hoopsman. Hoopsman, that was Hoopsman, so yeah. good. That guy was good. And, it, Bro, for, and for Brazilians, for people who don't know, Fernandinho, the same Fernandinho that played in Manchester yes. City. Oh, yes. Douglas, Douglas Costa, Fernandinho. the one that went to Bayern Munich, <gasps> currently uh, plays no in LA way. Galaxy. Yep. Uh, Luis, who Adriano. Else? Luis Adriano. Luis Adriano. I was going to say, Luis Adriano was there or not? He was. Mm-hmm. Te- Teixeira, Tyson. Alex Teixeira, Tyson, oh, Bernard. There. This Bernard team was Madison. stacked. Like it was like not even oh Willian he played with Willian too the Willian that played went yeah. to Chelsea yeah this like that was a that was a team man bro that Heno, was Heno and Willian were doing one twos all the time oh yeah it that, shows that, how much that the the environment that you're in helps you grow as a player it helps you grow in your skills it helps you understand football much better. That's what he was doing at the time. And now, if Heno manages to go to a club like that where they can improve him, they can work on him, they can work with him, that's that's the best. Sorry about that. You know what makes <laughs> that's the best thing problem. for him. You know what makes me happy about Bertian? Is that he has that same hustle and work ethic and professionalism that Heno has. Like, yeah. the put in the work every day, do as, go as hard as you can, do your best. But he also doesn't forget to have fun. And yeah. that shows because he doesn't feel the pressure the way Heno does. Yeah. And and just to just to wrap this up in a nice bow for everyone. And I know Anman, oh I'm I'm gonna do this for the sake of being fair. And we said youngest you he he made his UEFA Champions League debut one year younger than Henrik Mkhitaryan. But if you look at Henrik Mkhitaryan's <laughs> Champions yeah. League season, he was in a group with Juventus, Chelsea, and North Shalane, yeah. and Shakhtar came in second place, and he yeah, Henrik yeah, scored was... twice in the Champions League. Fantastic team! Fair, I remember watching that. It was it was wonderful. To be fair, Edo now is the age Heno was when he made that debut, and mm-hmm. Edo, uh, or if I'm not mistaken. That group stage wasn't Heno's first. Heno was like 23, 24. Uh, he was 22 when he played against Roma and some other teams, I believe Barca. And that mm-hmm. that one group stage wasn't so good. But well, uh, yeah, uh, and yeah. to be fair, I, I also to be fair and maybe equalize things a little bit in this sort of uh, friendly competition between the two. Uh, Edo and Krasnodar are banned from Europe now. So that's true. Which they would have been playing in Europe this season had they not have been banned. So good point. But I will say, Shakhtar ended up getting knocked out for those wondering in the round of 16 in February of 2013 against Borussia Dortmund, which Henrik joined a few months later. So wink, very class. Wink, yeah. Wink. Yeah. So again, I think if he was playing European competition we would probably see a similar story. But speaking of Heno, our man's is back. He made his debut for Inter Milan yesterday, coming back from an injury and played in the Il Derby 
de la, I don't know how to say it, Madonnina. I, I was just in Italy. I should be able to pronounce it better. Uh, <laughs> you you against, were about to butcher it. I was about to butcher it. Up. I'm proud of you. Against city rivals and stadium sharers, right? AC Milan. Um, I didn't watch the game. I think Henry came on and played about half an hour or so. So good for him getting his fitness back. Uh, of course, uh, Inter are in the UEFA Champions League. So he will be probably seeing a lot of football. Um, and Armin, something about European competitions you want to chime in here? Uh, we have a lot. Uh, but speaking of European competitions and UEFA Champions League, well, that's he, the only one we got at that high stage, but we got several in UEFA uh, Conference League. We already spoke about uh, Andre Chalashir and Silkeborg, and we'll uh, analyze a little bit in depth his group later on. But we have Tikam Palsikian also playing Europe this season. Uh, and domestically for Slovan Bratislava, the team he plays at, he keeps bagging goal after goal and providing wins for Slovan. I believe this uh, this weekend was the, like the second time in a row Slovan won one nil uh, for in Fortuna Liga and with a Tigran Partizan goal like twice in a row now. He is on fire ahead of Europe. He is on fire. And speaking of fire. Things are starting to heat up in Germany, Chadens, with our boy Sargis Adamian. How has his time been with FC Köln? Sako scored his first goal for Köln, finally. One goal plus one assist in 175 Bundesliga minutes this season. So that's, if you sum it up, that's one direct contribution every 88 minutes in a top five league. Uh, he, there are some play, games he didn't play. He should have started, which would have made sense. Uh, that way he could have, you know, gotten his form much more easily. Uh, those things play a role. However, his goal still makes us happy. And for sure, there's a lot more to come. There is definitely. Form is yeah. form. It, it, it's, look, at this point, Koln is playing under their manager a very free form attacking football they have a number of forwards and it looks like rotation is very very important for this team and Sako will be getting his minutes and he has to make the most of them because if he wants to replace someone in that starting lineup he needs to be contributing goals and we see it he is Hopefully, bro. This I don't know. I don't know if that's the goal. I, I, speaking of goals, and of course, when you speak of Sarkis Zalami, you, you speak of goals. But uh, I don't. I don't think that's the objective. Like back at Hoffenheim with uh, Schroeder, uh, mm -hmm. he was the super sub. Back at um, then later on in Bruges again with Schroeder, he mm -hmm. was. A super sub. He's all about the stats and helping the team work from wherever, from whichever like role he gets, right? And the stats prove that. The stats are a result of that uh, ethic. He he knows he's not like the most stamina based player, but he's explosive and uh, he capitalizes so good, bro. He knows his virtues and, and, and his strong points and makes the most of them. That's true. Um, he does he does seem to tire out quickly. Uh, it's just how he is. And I've been noticing that he's been playing predominantly as a left winger when he's been coming on, uh, which I think is mm -hmm. interesting because, really? yeah, yeah, he's been playing as a left winger. But it's been working for him he because play he, anywhere. he's been, uh, he's been making those, front. yeah, he's been making those diagonal runs into the box. And that's he's that's back. how he's been getting in dangerous situations. He's doing great, and he will continue to. I I've, I have no 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 doubt about it. Well, we've been talking about these players. We've been talking about them for a reason. All of these players that we have been discussing are actually going to be the ones that are representing Armenians in European competition. We will first start with the UEFA Champions League, where we have one Armenian, Henrik Mkhitaryan, with Inter Milan, who shares a group with FC Bayern, Barcelona. And Victoria Pizen, uh, gentlemen, we'll make this a little quick uh, since we have a lot to cover. 
Inter Milan and Mkhitaryan, where do they finish in this group? Chadens, we'll start with you. Hmm. Uh, this, this is tough. Uh, Europa League is realistic. Uh-huh. But it's it's not impossible for round of 16. Okay. All right. Amen. Where do you think? Does Mkhitaryan have a chance to progress in the Champions yeah. League, the competition he's been wanting to play in again ever since... Uh. Fucked up against Real Madrid. Oh, that still haunts me. At Borussia, yeah, yeah, bro. And see, that's one of the reasons why I tell you he has always felt pressure a little too much, and uh, that contributed to his uh, downfall from zero to zero at the national team. He wasn't captain material, and that's why. Well, well, now he's got nothing to lose, and Inter uh, are a great team. With, I would say, Barcelona at one of the lowest points in recent history. Uh, topping the group is possible. Second place is definitely realistic. And worst case scenario, Europe, uh, Europa League isn't bad. So they got nothing to lose. Yeah, well, we'll see. Their first game is this Wednesday. So it should be the day after this episode comes out against Bayern Munich at home. Uh, that's going to be an interesting game. Me as a Bayern supporter, every single time uh, my team has played against Mkhitaryan, uh, Mkhitaryan has come out on top. So <laughs> good omen there, I guess, right, for him? Uh, now, dropping down mm. one peg into the UEFA Europa League, where FC Nantes and football games from future star Gorman Velian share a group with Olympiakos, Freiburg, and the team that we do not speak of. Uh, the first game is this <laughs> Thursday versus Olympiacos at home. Uh, uh, now, we can't talk about this team without discussing the fact that Gorman Velian has been consistently on the yeah. bench for Nantes, but not playing a single minute. Gentlemen, what the It's good fuck? for the winter. He's warming up that, that bench that he's sitting on. It's good for the winter, but... Uh, uh. <laughs> Is he, he going to play? I mean, we were, talking, uh, we were talking about, great, Nantes is in European competition, lots of games, rotation is going to be needed. Uh, we oh, don't yeah. expect him to play in Europe, right, Armin? Or do we? No, uh, Yeah, exactly. No, 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 we don't. Uh, but the thing is, we expect him to at least play the cup games because he's been dropped now. Uh, he's benched or straight to not be. And... He's back scoring. He's like playing only one half for Nantes B. And this weekend, only one half was enough for him to score. Uh, he's way too good for that. And everybody knows. And I, you follow Nantes uh, fan base. And they all like take a dump on their coach. Not to say a different <laughs> word. Right? But for doing this. And deserve it to show, bro. I mean, especially. When we talk about how it's unfair the treatment Najai is getting at Munich, this is the same case, but in France. Yeah, and and apparently Com uh, Combula, right, is the, is the name of the manager. Yeah. He's, he has done this before yeah. to other notable players that ended up being very good players. So it's it's yeah, a bit of a toss up. Week one. Um, yeah. Yes. So I, I'm trying to find um, the squads because I. Notice that some of the clubs uh, started submitting their squad list to UEFA ahead of the competition because they have to at this point. Uh, and I'm trying to keep track of all of them uh, just to see where our boys are at, if our boys are in the squad. And this is one that I wanted to pay a little particular attention to. And the reason is because I wanted to see if Gorman Velen was even going to be in the squad for Europe. I, I, would, I would expect him to be. Uh, but you never know. So I'm trying to get that to load. Oh, wait. And no notes. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I will. We'll, we'll see. I'm. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to pull it up. I'm trying <laughs> to buy time by rambling on, while this thing loads. I have a million things open. Oh no, Do official squad list. It's not available yet. So we will find out soon. Update. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. All right. Moving on to the tertiary competition, the UEFA Europa Conference League. Probably where we are as football Gantron are probably going to be focusing the most on. Uh, we have Silkeborg and Andre Chalassier 
share an impossible group, as described by Ottoman, with Anderlecht, West Ham, and Stau Bucharest. Oh, man. Silkeborg start their European journey at home right. versus Anderlecht. Uh, sorry, away in Belgium versus Anderlecht. Now, um, if Chalisir was a young center back, I would say something along the lines of, this is good, would be good for him. Uh, you know, he's going to be playing against really good competition. It'll test him, he'll grow. But this is a guy that is nearing the tail end of his career, uh, already extremely experienced. Um, but he still, you know, if he could stay fit, uh, I guess good sparring sessions, right, for when he plays in the national team. Yeah, that's the objective. That's the objective there. Uh, I don't think there's any really anything more to add there. I don't know if Silkeborg are going are gonna to go through because... Uh, I think the dark horse of this group is, is, is Stowell, of course. Um, but yeah, probably Bro, they, not. They, they lost the gate against HJK and got a pretty similar result as Alashket did against the uh, Finnish champions last season. Uh-huh. So a few equal Silkeborg, slightly, maybe slightly better to Alashket than uh-huh. it's realistic. Fourth place is the only place they're, they're going to get. Hopefully, they don't concede a lot. That's all, all we can hope for. Yeah, as long as he shows some good defensive grit, I think I think we should be happy. And fitness, please. Please keep him fit. And Seriously, healthy. man. <laughs> we, I want this guy. I mean, we need him. Considering Haroyan is uh, suspended for that first game, I think it's imperative that, that he's fit and, and ready. Um to, to go alongside Stiopo Makrishan or Arthur Kardashian. Uh, and hopefully Kardashian gets called up. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Moving on. Uh, FC Köln and Sargis Adamian share a group with Nice, Partizan Belgrade, and Czech Slovako. Uh, their first game is this Thursday versus Nice away in Côte d'Azur. Shout out to Theo. Um, we expect Sako to score goals here. Uh, I think... This was going to be fun. This one's going to be fun. Partizan can 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 wreck. Uh, Slovako should definitely not be underestimated. Uh, but these are teams and defenses that Adamian should be licking his lips at. He he should be scoring a lot of goals here. I mean, he's got a heavyweight as Nice, but it's definitely not uh, uh, impossible. Mm-hmm. So that's great practice for the national team, mm-hmm. and then. You got solid Eastern European uh, or Central slash Balkanic uh, sites uh, in Partizan and Slovakia, so that's that would be good for his confidence. Tough, but definitely doable. I mean, spe- speaking of, of of big of big teams, Köln is the biggest team in this group. I think we shouldn't we shouldn't minimize that. It's they're the Bundesliga team. I, I would say it's pretty leveled up against Nice. Uh, that's probably my Bundesliga bias then. I think I think Köln, <laughs> Köln is, is the bigger team. Uh, well, gentlemen, wrapping up the European segment and arguably what's probably going to take a bulk of the rest of the show uh, is FC Punic Yerevan, who will be competing in the UEFA Europa Conference League, being the second Armenian representative of the competition uh, in consecutive seasons, Punic share a group with FC Basel of Switzerland, Slovan Bratislava, uh, where Tigran Barcelona plays, and Zalgris. Uh, first, Armen, let's do a little back and forth here. Tough group. Mm-hmm. Very tough group. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had said that if Punic had a draw anywhere similar to the one that Alashkert had last season, we would expect this Punic side to push for a second spot. Now, looking at this team, Zagris, Slovan Bratislava, and FC Basel, I think to me and to most people, it's probably very evident who's going to end up on top of this group. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely going to be Basel. Uh, and... Honestly, it's a great opportunity. I mean, I'm I'm gonna get into this a little later, uh, and I know Challenge likes this topic a lot, so we, we're gonna be discussing this. But before going into Basel, uh, you got Slovan Bratislava, which is 
a honestly a central european giant i mean during the, the communism years they were huge and after that they managed to at least domestically and regionally stay up top now they're back in europe with a lot of personnel a lot of money and of course the grand Bazekian is one of those uh, big names uh, under the payroll but they're still as Shannon says all signings are not always um, the best remedy for a team to get results they are looking shaky so a draw may be possible of course Slogan is going to post for a second place and and it's realistic for them uh, but a draw against them is definitely possible uh, Pretty much, I would say they're tied up, uh, Slovan and Zalgiris from Lithuania. They're a Baltic giant, Eastern, Eastern Baltic giants. Uh, but surprisingly enough, their first team in group, in go, group stages, I believe. Uh, the first Lithuanian team. Yeah, first Lithuanian oh team. God. So similar <laughs> to what Alashket was for us last year. I bet it's the first Baltic team as a whole, Lithuania, Lithuania uh, Latvia, and, uh, and Estonia as a whole. I don't. I believe Estonia might have had a representative last season. I don't remember. Uh, but I think no, 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 no. They didn't because not I remember, sure. I think they didn't. Uh, uh, Estonia might. Have been, by they would have been that. Uh, oh, I remember yeah, them talking about yeah, it with, yeah. because of the whole uh, Harara Termina fiasco. Uh, but of course, they were never gonna beat Andele. But, uh, bro, Zalgiris are good, right? I mean, they but, don't look that good on paper, but they are actually tougher than they look. But, but let's, of course, a win is possible. But let's point out the obvious here you have three Eastern European classified teams in Zalgiris, Slovan Bratislava, and Punic. All three mm -hmm. of these teams have one. Thing in common and that is lapses in concentration Slovan Bratislava should have been a Champions League team but they lapsed in concentration mm -hmm. multiple times Punic could have gone farther if they did not lapse in concentration although you know Cervena Zaveta that was never going to happen but you know uh, Slovan fucked up big time they could they two penalty shootouts due to them lapsing in concentration They've been bailed out by Tigran Barsevian, and of course, being an Armenian and being an Armenian club, you are you 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 already know the guy inside and out. So if it's it's a it's a double edged sword here for us when Punic play uh, play Slovan, but I fully fully anticipate Melikian to shut Barsevian down in and this I, match. I think Slovan has like really three Georgian players. Mm -hmm. I think Slovan has like three Georgian players and Tico. Um, yeah. Uh, and now that you mention it, um, we got some good personnel. So if Melikian, uh, you know what scares me here? Before what? going into the whole Basel analysis, because that's going to be interesting. Despite I anticipate two losses against Basel, uh, what in, what intrigues me and scares me the most about Punic is what's going on behind the curtains, what's going on inside the locker rooms, because. On the one hand, you got a squad that is way better, in my opinion, than Alashkert's squad was last season. Mm -hmm. Way better. And Alashkert for Europe only signed one good signing in Jose Mbalo. That paid off definitely in European group stages uh, immediately. And Alashkert signed four, uh, and Punic signed now four players of that same level for Europe alone. And, and they're yeah. still. The, uh, missing a few signings uh, according to rumors um, but four times as many good players at, as Alash get signed added to the pre-existing uh, quality squad what scares me about Punic is what all of the fighting we've mentioned the, uh, earlier um, some players that shouldn't be in, in the even in their second squad but they're starting uh, in European games, not even on the APL, like some of their first string players are Armenian second tier uh, division level. But let's let's but let's put it this way: it, if we're talking about the back line, we have one player in particular that's been starting that we don't think is good, which is Mikhail Kovalenko. 
mm-hmm. who comes from the Russian second division. Uh, but Rush? this was second because third? third, I don't know what, uh, maybe even third division at this point. Um, I know Buchnev comes from well, third division. Third so division. We yeah, have, yeah. But we have some players who are still injured, but a lot have come back. Uh, Gaich, Sergei Vakulenko, mm-hmm. and Baranov, who are probably the three starting central defenders. If all three are fit, Kovalenko is not going to see a minute. The issue is Baranov and Gaich are injured still. Gaich got back healthy and re-aggravated his injury. Bro, excuses. That place should have been for Aussie. I agree. I agree. It should have been for Aussie. Uh, elsewhere, uh, this Juninho at left back, that guy sucks. Um, mm-hmm. That guy's he. Every time he goes forward, he loses the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, a place, though, that does make me optimistic is uh, – so we, we've been talking about uh, Kocic? 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 Uh, yeah, Kocic. Think. Him in central midfield. But the fact that they signed awful, Spirovsky bro. Oh, yeah, I know. But... Is what makes me think, okay, yeah. yes, not, Gebrok oh, Najarian it... should be playing there. But having Spirovsky makes me feel a lot better because their transition from defense to attack – when Harutunyan is not on the ball, is awful. When it's anyone else, it sucks because they can't carry the ball forward. But Spirovsky, we expect to break up play and help distribute the ball to Harutunyan or Davidian or uh, Milenovic or just anyone, you know, whoever's holding up the ball, Nanetovic up top, Juricic, someone. Um, um, look, 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 look. Uh, I'm sorry to call you up here, but first, Nazarian is not necessarily like okay you gotta play Kochuk there okay uh, Najarin can play fullback both sides but as you said on the right side uh, right back I think they have a few good players but they play this Juninho guy on the left back Najarin yeah. could have definitely been there and he's not center back you got this Kovalenko dude playing over Aussi and and he uh, Pionik just got him from Borussia Dortmund. Bro, that is unprecedented for the APL. For an APL team to got a, a guy that was about to sign with Borussia and couldn't because of paperwork issues. Make the yeah. most of that, bro. Why Not only that, Dinamo Kiev, a, a team that's substantially better than Punic. Yeah. Bro, you, you're starting a goddamn player from the Russian third division that can kick a ball for his life. Over yeah. a guy that was about to sign with Borussia Dortmund. Uh, and, 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 and speaking of that, Najarian actually has European experience, unlike yeah. you know number of and the players right? in this. So it's it's the it's so like it's it's so many questionable decisions are going on at, at, at right now. And I Bro, and it, he's not he rejected a move. To the Ukrainian Premier League, they he had offers from the Ukrainian Premier League, which is 25 spots higher than the APL. For this, he wanted to get the citizenship and play for the um, for the national team, and that's how they pay, that that's how they um uh how, how they pay him. Uh, and another like I don't want to go too much into Najarian because uh, I'm going to get angry for the treatment. But another case is this Kochuk guy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you got already, you got Sambrano, who is a former MLS and uh, a Spanish huge club like Valladolid uh, player. You got, I don't know, who else was there uh, center, at center mid? Uh, they signed up another UPL guy. They, like, they have good quality players. That could mm-hmm. have replaced Kuchuk, and he keeps starting. That's why I'm not even sure if, okay, maybe he will play Spirovsky alongside Kuchuk. Two, I mean, one good and then one bad doesn't make, uh, doesn't make things neutral. I mean, it could pay off, but it could also be horrendous uh, with Spirovsky on the pitch and all. I don't know, man. But, you know, good news, though, in, in their last match against uh, Artsakh, where they won 1 0, uh, Vakulenko, Mihilovic, and Bratkov were the starting three central defenders. So, and uh, I don't know if that means that he's saving Kovalenko for Europe, but I 
Sure, right? that's not the case. Um, but uh, other well, that's news how it looks like, bro. That is how it looks Jeez. like. But we had Harutunian playing, Dashian playing, Yurchenko playing. In terms of Armenians, off the bench, Gurenik Petrosyan, Alexander Karapetyan, and Aras Ozgulis. Six Armenians. You can't complain. That's better oh, than, than, than let, we... Let, let's see. There. Let's let's wait and see how they play against Pata. Uh, well, let's yeah. wait. Let's wait for the squad list first, which which I had checked. The official squad list is not out as of recording. Uh, but I do expect to see several players being dropped. Uh, whether Najarian's one of them, it's looking highly likely because he wasn't even in the squad for this game. Um, Yo, was that Uh No, he was not. And I know David Yan, I know for a fact that David Yan is uh, about to go to the Russian Premier League. So, okay, you got another one there. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking what of Punic, the, uh, the, the last one was Ambrano, but he wants to stay. So, uh, speaking of Punic, bro, uh, they play UEFA Youth League for the, like, they will be the first Armenian team ever to play preliminary uh, rounds of UEFA uh, Youth League. And they got drawn against Nantes. So, uh, F, to pay respects for Punic. Um, it was fun while it lasted. And it didn't last much. And it won't last much. How, But, how, does, the, how does the Youth League work? Uh, like, is it, are, is it like a big tournament? Is, it, is there a group stage? or? It, it's weird. It's weird, but interesting. Because uh, the teams that play... Champions League senior group stage play UEFA Youth League group stage, mm -hmm. and later on there's like this knockout knockout stage where uh -huh. the group stage uh, clubs that make it through so, will play against some of the best teams uh, from the other uh, league uh, championships like mm -hmm. UEFA Europa League. You got Europe Nantes that's playing senior Europa League against mm -hmm. Munich. That's senior conference league. Uh, the winner, like the winners of this preliminary parallel uh, stages, knockout stages, will meet, I believe, the uh, UEFA Youth League group stages in knockout stages, like the final rounds. So, but we don't know when they're playing yet, though, right? There, they, is there... I, I think they're playing this week. Uh, they have, like, it's in a home and away game. The first game, I think, is going to be this week. Either way, of course, we don't anticipate the Punic boys to beat none, but it's huge practice on the one, on the one hand. Yeah. It's great to, to have them by, like, the fact that they're going to be playing and featuring in such high level, uh, regardless of the result, it's already a step up. Um, it's already a, a milestone for many of these kids. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, hopefully it gets at least two or three of their young guys uh, APL ready. Mm -hmm. That would be a huge step and, and a game changer for Armenian football. Okay, so, boys, we have the group. We have the draw. First match, September 8th, away to Basel. Then September 15th, at home to Slovan Bratislava. Very two hard first fixtures for Punic. Then in October 6th, home to Zalgris, and then on October 13th, away to Zalgris. Then October 27th, away to Slovan, and then finishing out uh, at home to Basel. That is Punic's schedule. Start with you, Chadens. Early predictions. Where will Punic finish in this group? Mm, third, maybe last. Third, maybe last. Okay. All right. Armen? Uh, obviously last, but they could, I think that they should push because of how the fixtures lined up. I think that the most winnable games are the ones against Slovan both mm -hmm. times. They should focus on those games. They're strategic, in my opinion. And against Basel, they should hopefully, because the, the Zagiris draw is directly related to national team uh, camp. Not just for the Armenian players, but you got your Spirovsky, you got your other ones, yeah. So uh, your Baranos, uh, I don't know. There are several there. Uh, so 
I wouldn't know what's gonna happen against Zagiris both games. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's that's like on hold, right? Uh, on paper, both Slovan games look the most winnable. Uh, mm-hmm. And against Basel, you got a golden opportunity to showcase some young talent, right? Grenic yeah. Kubokin from Future Star, Grenic Petros and off the bench. Give him 15 to 20 minutes each game uh, so that he can explode and do his best. Uh, because if you play him uh, longer than that, he's maybe not going to keep up with it. Uh, and start Hovan Nisaru Jr. on both games. Uh, I would have said start Najari on both games, but you know that's not going to happen. Uh, yeah. And Davidian as well. Uh, he's both of them are uh, long gone by now, but it's a strategic opportunity. Maybe, bro, with the youth league and all, I don't know, do something with Basel, uh, their scouting uh, network. They're you know, huge in that regard. I, Bring them I, to Armenia, have them invite them over to, I don't know, Uratu and Bukuma games, do stuff like that. Speaking of Grenik, I think there had to have been something to get him to be okay with coming back to Punic. There had to have been something. You know, Melikian must have promised him game time in Europe. Because, or else what's I the mean, point? Bench, if, bench is definitely possible. We'll see. Uh, what I think, looking at this group is tough. I think Punic are going to, I think Punic are going to upset. But I think they're also going to drop easy points. Um Third place, I think, is where Punic There are no are. easy points for Punic in Europe. Yeah, there are none. But just to remind everyone, for every game Punic wins, they get half a million euros. And for every match they draw, 166,000 euros. Which, there you go. that's, like, just for qualifying, they got 3 million, which is probably enough for their salaries for two years over. Uh, so, a lot, a lot <laughs> of money on the table here. A win or two wins would be humongous for them. Um, let's see what happens. I'm really, really excited for this. The first game, again, away to Basel. That's gonna be that's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna I'm so excited to watch that game. Uh, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be very cool. We're gonna be supporting. We will be live tweeting the games. Uh, a lot more detailed, similar to what we do for national team matches uh, for these Punic games because uh, it's a big deal. I mean, we're very excited to see Punic. Uh, when the squad list comes out, we will do a review of that probably on our socials. So if you don't already, go drop us a follow there. Gentlemen, it's time to wrap up the show. A couple quick topics to discuss. Uh, starting first with the women's national team, who scored their first official goal in a decade against Kosovo. Uh, turned out to be an own goal in actuality, but we take what we can get. However, the ladies' focus was the not enough the as they conceded twice in the last 10 minutes of the game to give up the lead and lose 2-1 to Kosovo. Their last game of the season will be up against Belgium, uh, who famously annihilated them uh, and was one of the reasons why a conversation uh, was started on the internet about potentially having a Nations League type format for the uh, women's football. Um, and I think, and as Chaudens had mentioned that also when, when we were discussing the women's national team in depth uh, and their first European journey, their first qualifying journey in over a decade, uh, it's a good idea. And I think as Armenians, we have seen our ladies perform very well against teams that are at their level. Uh, so big proponent of that over here at Football Game Fun. And finally, the Armenian men's national team. Last camp of the season kicks off in three weeks. The squad list should be announced right after European club competition second match day. So about two weeks from now, a week and a half from now. Uh, And we have no idea what to expect. We are taking on Ukraine at home and then traveling away to the Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland to take on the Republic of Ireland. Uh, in what will be the <laughs> match that will determine whether Armenia is relegated or not. Uh, it's going to be a big one. Uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about when the squad list comes out. You already know mm-hmm. we're going to be nitpicky about it because that's how we are. Uh, <laughs> and we know better. And uh, <laughs> we're, yeah, we we're, little, we're little armchair generals over here. 
Um, excited for it. Keyboard warriors. <laughs> Keyboard warriors. Uh, the European. We're not. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> this will be, though, our, our last Armenian national team matches for a very, very long time until March of 2023, uh, where the Euro journey will begin. Uh, the draw for that is October oh, yes. 9th. Uh, we do, however, expect some friendlies in November. Uh, we'll see what the national team manages to uh, put together, what the FFA has in store for us. But gentlemen, great conversation. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us. Thank you for You're inviting welcome. us into your ear holes uh, and letting us fill your brain with the knowledge of Armenian football that we possess. Uh, you know, some people have useful, useful knowledge, and this is just what God <laughs> gifted to us. <laughs> we, this is what well, we have. This is just what we have. <laughs> All right. Any last thoughts uh, on anything that we discussed today? Chadens? No, I think we covered it all. The... We summed it up very nicely, most of them. Uh, there were more good news this time as well. Uh, and hopefully there will be more better news. Amen. any last thoughts? Uh, no, I don't have thoughts. I just have jokes and most of the time they ain't even good. But at least, you're, so, at least you're aware. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, I don't know, man. I, I Just looking forward to what's to come. There's a lot wow. to come. There is a lot to come. There is a lot to come. So follow us on all of our social Starting media. Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Facebook, all that jazz. Watch Punic on Thursday. Take on Basel Thursday. UEFA Europa Conference League. Tweet about Eduard Sperzian. This kid is a okay. gem. Push yep. this kid out. Uh, and yeah, just see you guys next time. Until then. Enjoy. Peace. <laughs> Damn.